record and their head coach Tom Osborne in his 21st year he's looking for his 10th Big A title his 200th win this year and he has had a storied career and record in Nebraska the head coach for the Bruins of UCLA Terry Donahue in his 18th season 131 wins 60 losses and eight ties the winningest coach in UCLA history as Tom Seeler will get set to kick it off for the University of Nebraska UCLA won the toss they've of course accepted to receive Ayers 25 and Colbert 39 back deep for the Bruins of UCLA and we are underway from Pasadena that's the freshman Andy Colbert and he'll down it in the end zone the Bruins will take it first and 10 from the 20 yard line and their quarterback Wayne Cook against the University of California two weeks ago he threw one touchdown and one interception tried to lead them back to victory and they came up two points short the rest of the backs look this way Stokes and Jordan the wide receivers Richards the tight end Milner and the true freshman Skip Hicks the tailback up front for the Bruins of UCLA Jonathan Ogden 315 pounder Craig Nowitzki making his 35th consecutive start Christensen the center sinks in the right guard and the All-America Vaughn Parker at right tackle and there indeed was a flag on the kickoff against the University of Nebraska the ball has been moved all the way up to the 35 yard line as you take a look at junior Wayne Cook out of Newberry Park California as Lynn mentioned last week's game his first complete game since his senior year of high school in 1988 back looking to get outside is Skip Hicks and the youngster from Wichita Falls Texas gets a couple before Toby Wright comes up from his rover spot to make the tackle Nebraska with Bruce Moore making the start Dante Jones is out this week Beeler Anderson and Stewart the linebackers and the secondary, Barry Miles, John Reese, Toby Wright, and Troy Dumas. So Dante Jones, one of the players injured for the University of Nebraska. He is suited up, but unlikely to see action today. On second down, little play action, throw it to the near side, that's Stokes. And Stokes up near first down territory at the 45-yard line. So on a second and seven, they swing it out to the near side. Wright and Beeler came up to make the tackle. J.J. Stokes, number 18, he is their weapon. You see his stats for the game against Cal. Tremendous receiver with great height, excellent speed, and because of his height at 6'4", he has a long stride. You can't gauge his speed extremely well, and when it's too late, he's behind you. Seven receptions, 106 yards against Cal, one touchdown in their opening game. That was two weeks ago. UCLA has had that week off to prepare for Nebraska. First and 10 from the 45-yard line. And out of the shotgun, bad snap. Cook picks it up. Manages to elude two Nebraska players. And now gets it past the 45 to the 46-yard line. And you see the heavily braced right knee of Wayne Cook. Very scary situation whenever he has to run with the football, Lynn. And Wayne Cook is, is not the fastest man out there. You see the brace there on his leg. He's had two knee operations. Uh, when he accepted the scholarship to UCLA in 1988 uh, in the All-Star game that summer, he heard his knee, decided not to enroll, didn't enroll until 1990, and then in the first game, first half of the first game last year, injured a knee again. Second and eight from the 47-yard line. Second man through his skip Hicks, and he's got a hole. Hicks could go all the way. Touchdown, UCLA, but a penalty marker is down at the 44-yard line. 53 yards on the touchdown run by the freshman Skip Hicks who took one against Cal. 40 yards for a touchdown. There in Washington out of the ball game, this young man saw his chance to have an impact on this team. He's taking advantage of it. Has tremendous speed as his asset, but unfortunately, it looks like that play is coming back and the penalty may be assessed against UCLA. Holding. Offense, 10-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Boy, and Terry Donahue's team, which has struggled offensively the last couple of years, they lose out on a big play. Look at the top of the screen. You see the holding right there. Number 93 is being held. That's Billy Wade. 
And that is the hold that they called against UCLA. Tough to see. Yeah, it is tough, especially when the hands are inside. And, you know, if the hands get outside, then it's a pretty easy call to make. But generally, when they're inside the shoulder pads, they don't make the call. So that nullifies the 53-yard touchdown run. And that brings up a, a second down and 20. Play action by Cook. Pressure, and he is nailed. Bruce Moore, number 90, the first man there, and then Terry Keneally come in to make the sack 10 yards on the loss and more of the senior from York Nebraska getting the start in place of the injured Dante Jones that'll bring up a third down and 27 from back on the 23 yard line and UCLA last week against Cal or two weeks ago 0 for 12 on third down situations until Hicks broke the touchdown run they ended up 2 for 14. Cook will throw it to the far side and the pass is incomplete. And we'd like to welcome all you folks watching that uh, San Diego State game to the Rose Bowl here in Pasadena, California, along with Lynn Swan. I'm Roger Twibel. The Bruins of UCLA had a 53-yard touchdown run by freshman Skip Hicks, nullified. And they're punting now. Darren Shager back inside his 10-yard line. And the left-footed kicker sends a nice spiral down to the 31 with Corey Dixon. Is met at the 40 yard line, 41 yards on the punt, nine yards on the return. As Tommy Frazier will come out to head the University of Nebraska Cornhuskers. You can see in 1992, 10 touchdowns, one interception. Frazier has been hobbled by a bad ankle so far this year. The rest of the University of Nebraska Cornhuskers, Dixon, one ride receiver, Abdul Muhammad, the wingback, Gerald Armstrong, the tight end. Schlesinger, the fullback, and the eyeback, Damon Benny. Taking the place of Calvin Jones as Frazier will check off on first down. Quick out. That's Reggie Ball making the catch at the 45-yard line. And for Nebraska up front, and they have got some big loads, folks. Lundberg goes 300. Zadeska goes 300. Malin 275, Stey 300, and Wiegert 300 pounds. You'd love to have those guys in front of you, Lynn, on a regular oh, basis. Absolutely. Whether you're playing football or you're going out to dinner, whatever. Second down and four. I don't know if I want them going out to dinner. My tap well, might be too Just high. leading the way, you know, getting through <laughs> the crowd in case there's a line right there. Donnie Edwards uh, was able to make the stop in the backfield as Benning was the ball carrier. UCLA will have London Woodfin, George Case, Matt Warner up front. The linebackers, Rod Smalley, and Cozy Littleton, Carrico Quinn, and Donnie Edwards. And in the secondary for UCLA, Lawrence Greenwood, Goodwin, and Travis Collier. On third down and three from the 47-yard line. The option, Frazier pitches it. First down, Nebraska. As Damon Benning, the freshman from Omaha, finally dropped by Nkosi Littleton. Well, and that's what makes Nebraska's offense, Lynn, so dangerous, the ability to run that option. And they've run it extremely well. The timing has been honed in the first two ball games of this year against North Texas and Texas Tech. They execute the timing extremely well. They've got a quick backfield. You'll watch the, the distance between the eye back and the quarterback. Always set in a good angle to take, this, take the pitch and cut it upfield. First and 10, they'll pull two blockers out. Good job by the UCLA defense right there. Benning had no room to go anywhere. And once again, Nkosi Littleton, who had a team-high 11 tackles against Berkeley two weeks ago. And George Case, 59, the nose tackle, the converted linebacker, the resident wild man of the UCLA defense, were there to make the stop with a loss of about five yards. Second and 14, three wide receivers for the Huskers of Nebraska. 9.56 to go, first quarter, Benning 
will get it down to the 46-yard line. Nearly got it back to the uh, original line of scrimmage. George Case, 6'2", 255, a sophomore from Valencia, California. I mentioned he was a former linebacker, a three-point grade point average. You might call him Case Study because on the field, he is a real wild man. Off the field, he's got a three-point grade point average and a fine, solid student citizen. Third down and 11. Down the middle, pass, caught. Pass was caught. Damon Benning. Ab Abdul Muhammad, number 27. And that's enough for the first down. One of the things Nebraska worked on tires tirelessly this spring was their short passing game. As you'll watch, number 27, Abdul Muhammad, make the catch here between the two backers. Playing a zone defense. Very good job of Frazier, who can't be inconsistent as a passer, waiting for him to get between those two backers and put the ball in on the mark. See that three catches, 54 yards, and a touchdown so far this year for the junior from Compton, California. As Frazier, first and 10 from the 35, checks off once again at Benning. Fumble! Ball still on the ground, and UCLA's got it. Donnie Edwards, number 23, I believe, was a man who made the recovery. Matt Warner was the guy that stripped it away, number 92, and the turnover. And UCLA with the football. Now watch, it's a good hole as Nebraska attempts to run straight up the middle. But right here, there's a contact and there's a power. Benning is trying to hold on to it, but the leverage just rips it out of his arm and the ball is gone. So UCLA creates the turnover and Damon Benning, the young man taking the place of Calvin Jones, who injured his ankle in the opening season. Nebraska win against North Texas. We'll think about that for a moment. First and 10 from the 27. First back through is Milliner, number 36. And he's across the 30 to the 32-yard line. James Milliner, the sophomore from Alexandria, Virginia, originally recruited as a tailback, but now in this depleted backfield for UCLA, Lynn running out of the fullback position. And he's doing a solid job. I don't think we'll ever see him turn into a great fullback for this football team, but he's doing an adequate, adequate job of blocking doesn't make a lot of mistakes, executes very well. Second and five and some confusion, and finally Cook's going to take a timeout. Cook is going to take a timeout. There was some confusion on the uh, UCLA offensive side, and we'll return to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena after this. Welcome back here to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Along with Lynn Swan, I'm Roger Twivell. For those of you expecting to see San Diego State and Air Force, as soon as that game gets started, we'll send you there. They've had thunder and lightning, so they've uh, held up that game. And uh, glad you can be with us here. No score between UCLA and Nebraska, 8.20 to go. First quarter, the Bruins, after taking the timeout, will give it to Hicks, and he's got some room on the left side. And Hicks gets to the 40-yard line. Lynn, what about the game plan for UCLA? Well, here are the things I think UCLA has to do to win this game. On offense, possess the football. Score in 75% of those possessions. Nebraska can, has been putting an average of 63 points on the scoreboard. If they can't stop them defensively, just keep the ball away. On the defensive side, they have to force Huskers to drive the field to score or to create the turnover. They created the turnover in midfield. Now they've got an opportunity. And also, they had the big play earlier that was called back when Hicks ran in for a touchdown. First and 10 from the 41. Anderson and Jordan split to the top of your screen. And whistles. Penalty flag down. Dead ball. Delay a game. Offense. Chuck McFerrin, the referee, makes the delay of game call against UCLA. Jim Coyne is the umpire. Dale Newhouse, the head linesman. Manuel Alonso, the line judge. Bill Gaskins, the field judge. Dan Spriesterbach is the side judge, and Kirk Dorman, the back judge, the officials for today's game for the Pac-10 Conference. Last week, uh, Nebraska penalized 13 times, 111 yards in their win against Texas Tech, where there was a Southwest Conference officiating crew. First and 15 from the 36-yard line for the Bruins. The option. Hicks finally picks it up, and he's got some room to the outside, and he is knocked out of bounds past midfield. Toby Wright was the only man between Skip Hicks and the goal line. 13 yards on the pickup. This is almost a great play for the defense. Watch a man at the top of the screen right there. That's Trev Albert, 34. Look at the hit. He gets right there on Cook. 
causing the bad pitch to the outside. Fortunately, Skip Hitch is able to pick it up and continue. Now watch the hit, 34 coming off the top. He gets in here extraordinarily early to stop any chance of this option developing to the outside. Trev Alberts was the man that uh, got in there and nailed Wayne Cook. And not much going right there at midfield as Trev Alberts, once again, the 6'4", 240-pound senior, nailed Hicks. And Northwestern has upset Boston College 22-21. Len Williams, a couple of touchdown passes. Good look at Trev Alberts. From Cedar Falls, Iowa, 13 tackles and five sacks so far this year. Third down and one for UCLA. Hicks slips. It's going to be interesting to see where they spot that football. I thought he got a bad spot in when he was knocked out of bounds. It looked like he was past midfield. And they brought that back. And they're going to spot it where he slipped. And, and UCLA, it's Terry Donahue, not real happy with that call. Well, in college football, your knee goes right. down, and that's where the ball is placed. Unfortunately for Hicks, and a very important, I think, third down situation for the Bruin team, he comes up very short. Shager back to punt, averaging just over 40 yards a punt on the season. And back deep, Corey Dixon. Not big, but a big-time player. Fair catch being called, and he takes it at the 11. Just 5'8", 165 pounds, 40 yards on the punt. No score between the Bruins and the Huskers. Passing and rushing. And generally, as we get a flag thrown, Nebraska will run the football and run the football and suck you in and then throw a long pass on you. Zach Wieger. Dead ball. Full start. Up Number down. 72. This has not been a right tackle. An auspicious no, start for either team here, Lynn. No, Let's check out not. the uh, Cornhusker game story. Well, offensively, do what they've been yeah. doing. Most of their history is run the football. As I said earlier, averaging 63 points a ball game, <laughs> you just want to keep that going. On the defensive side, they don't want to give up the play, which they have done already, even though it was called back. Avoid a lot of mistakes because they've switched their defense this year to a 4-3, and it's been a lot of problems. Well, there's a lot of confusion right now by the Cornhuskers as a man coming on the field late, and Tommy Frazier has decided to call a timeout. With 6.16 to go first quarter, we will return. Welcome back here to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Along with Lynn Swan, I'm Roger Twino, John Neighbor down on the sidelines. Uh, uh, Nebraska timeout after a penalty. They've got it first and 15 from the six-yard line. Schlesinger, 40, is the fullback. Benning, 21, the eye back. And that's Benning up the middle, and he gets about three. Let's go to New York and John Saunders. Roger, you'll recall a year ago, Northwestern was hammered by Boston College. This year, David Gordon sails wide, 40 yards on the attempt. And as a result, Northwestern holds off BC. 22-21 is the final. San Diego State and Air Force, that game is back underway after the delay because of lightning. We'll keep you updated. Roger, back to you. Thanks, John. Second and 12. Reggie Ball, number seven, split to the top of your screen. Double tight end formation for Nebraska. Confusion by Nebraska, but Frazier throws downfield. He's got his man at the 30-yard line, making the reception. Tremaine Bell, number 80, the senior from Chicago, 29 yards on the pickup. Hey, Lynn, was that offense by accident there, or what I happened? I mean, that is definitely <laughs> offense, offense by accident. Frazier sitting in the middle of the pocket. I mean, I can't tell what he wants to run, whether he was looking for someone to throw to. He gets a little play action here, but look, he doesn't complete it. Benning never goes through on the play action. He stops in a little makeshift pocket and finds Bell downfield. But like a good receiver, Bell just kept running, right? Yeah, absolutely. You never know when you're going to get it. Well, when you're a receiver playing for Nebraska, you always keep running. First and 10 and stuffed right at the 30-yard line. No going for Damon Benning. The freshman from Omaha, Donnie Edwards, 23. He is the hit man on the UCLA defense with five career sacks and three forced fumbles a year ago. 6'3 and 220 from San Diego. He will love to come up and put a hit on you. Well, the very physical player, loves the contact. She tackles 70. 
Gain of one, second and nine. And you see the hit right here he makes. Roger, he loses yeah, he the sure ball. did. Then he was able to get it back on the play action. Tommy Frazier looking downfield. Catch is made, but no, he was out of bounds. Abdul Mohammed made the catch. Carl Greenwood, 21, was on the coverage for UCLA. We'll take a look. College football, one foot in bounds is all you need. Watch him closely on the sideline. He goes up, and he is clearly out of bounds. They call those guys the itty bitty wide receivers. Abdul Muhammad 5'9 and 160. Corey Dixon 5'8, 160. Ball 5'8, 165. Third down and nine from the 30. Frazier's completed three of four with 37 yards as he checks off at the line of scrimmage. Throws it to the far side. The completion and good defense there by UCLA. Reggie Ball made the catch, but Tommy Benedict. Marvin Goodwin, 22, makes sure he goes no further. And the Cornhuskers will have to punt it with 4.09 to go first quarter. Tommy Frazier, the first freshman, true freshman ever to start for Tom Osborne at the University of Nebraska. As first true freshman at quarterback. Yeah, Steve first two, Taylor. Exactly. In 1988, started for him. Byron Bennett to a punt it. Paul Gidry back at the 25-yard line. And a UCLA bounce, and it's down at the 38-yard line. So good field position for the Bruins. 32 yards on the punt by uh, Bennett, who averages over 40 yards a punt. On our checklist, we said that Nebraska couldn't let UCLA in this ball game. Terry Donahue's team right now has to feel coming in as 11 or 12 point underdogs in this ball game. With the exception of a couple of mistakes they've made, they'd have the lead in this ball game. Well, one of the things Terry Donahue knows in this year of UCLA football is that they have to run the football better. No one from the Bruins were in the top 10 in the Pac-10 in rushing last year. And Miller will take it to the 40 yard line. Gain of about three as Dwayne Harris, number 86, came up to make the tackle. There's a look at Harris, who Charlie McBride, their defensive coordinator, told me last night, this guy has a wingspan that's greater than Neil Smith, a tremendous pass rusher of years gone by. He says it's about seven feet. He's got about a 38 and a half inch sleeve. He says it's exactly one inch longer than Neil Smith. <laughs> And now, now, what does that mean, right? It means he can reach out and grab it. Means, it means when he's got contact with a lineman, he's got a good three feet on the other side. He can reach out and grab a ball carrier. One back, three wide receiver formation for UCLA on second down. And they'll go to the far side. The catch made over there by Kevin Jordan. And Jordan finally tripped up inside the 30-yard line on a second and eight. The 29-yard catch and run before Toby Wright makes the tackle. Wayne Cook reading the secondary. Looks like man the coverage. You see he takes a big hit that time from Lorenzo Brinkley, number five, coming in on the blitz. But watch what Kevin Jordan does. We know J.J. Stokes is the number one target for the Bruins, but that means if they double cover him or put pressure on him, you have to go to the other side. Kevin Jordan with nine catches for 92 yards last week is prepared to pick up the slack and keep a defense honest. Tyrone Williams missed that tackle on Jordan. First and 10 from the 31 yard line. And Hicks got some room up the middle. I'll tell you the left side of the UCLA line. If you look at it, Nowitzki is a senior. Number 71 has started 35 straight games. Ogden, 6'8 and 315, a sophomore learning with every game. Number 79. Yeah. Number yeah. 62, James Christensen. These guys are really the strength of the UCLA football team. As big as Nebraska's offensive line is, UCLA can match it. Second and five from the 26, 213 to go first quarter. Hicks again. Hicks with great balance. Hicks runs to the 16-yard line. Terrific job by the freshman from Wichita Falls, Texas. 11 yards on the pickup before Alberts and Miles finally make the tackle. I'll tell you, number 73, Matt Sinkson, 
Craig Nowitzki up front, number 71, the right guard pulling over, doing an excellent job up front. Watch Nowitzki, number 71, the big man move to the outside. He gets here, he seals, boom, right there. He just gets a man, takes him down. Arm got around him a little bit, a little holding, but right. nobody caught it. Perfect for an offensive lineman. First and 10 from the 16. Milliner and Hicks, the running backs. That's Hicks. I'll tell you what, Roger, I, was just, I was just gonna make the point for a freshman, he has an uncanny awareness of where the tacklers are and where he wants to go. He's, it almost appears like he's so light and so small when the Nebraska tacklers are coming in to make contact, he's just bouncing away from them. Otherwise, it looks like pretty poor job of trying to tackle by Nebraska at this moment. A loss of a yard on the play. Emmett Smith, when he was in College of Florida, would run that way. Didn't look like he was that fast or that strong. He could pick his spots, and he knew where to go. Does that mean uh, Hicks is going to make about three million a year someday? Or four. Cook throwing downfield. The pass intended for Kevin Jordan, and it was Baron Miles, the junior, from Roselle, New Jersey, on the coverage. Baron Miles, number 14 in 1992, was concerned about the mistakes he made. Last season, this year, he worked very hard on recognition. You see him doing a good job reading the quarterback and seeing that he had an opportunity for the intercept, and he took it. Third down and 11. Less than a minute to go. First quarter, no score. UCLA and Nebraska from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Cook. Ducks, 99. Terry Keneally. The junior from Hyannis, Nebraska, with his third sack of the year last week against Texas Tech. Nebraska had nine sacks. That's their second so far today. This is what you call a solid bull rush. He comes from the inside. The defensive secondary is doing a good job in, in man coverage. Just look at him. He just pushing his way inside, maintaining his lane. And when Cook steps up, Keneally is right there to wrap him up. 39-yard field goal attempt by Bjorn Merton, freshman from Centerville, Virginia. the hold of Jeff Clark and it's good UCLA is on the board first against the Cornhuskers of Nebraska UCLA leads Nebraska three to nothing with 13 seconds to go first quarter let's go to New York and John Saunders John Roger the big matchup in the SEC East Danny Werfel here for Florida eight yards look at the time in the pocket gets the touchdown to Aubrey Hill and they lead Tennessee John these aerial shots today are courtesy of the Goodyear blimp Eagle based in Carson California today's pilot is uh, Nick Nicolari from Lake Forest to California and boy what a beautiful day to have the blimp here in Southern California man. no hail no hail here you can bet that was a uh, new career long field goal for Bjorn Merton, the freshman, the 39 yards, is a previous long 30 quarter, and then of course later in the game when they scored and had to, and then we're driving at the end of the game trying to get Merton in position for a field goal, and Cook was intercepted at the end of the game. Yes, Merton to, he kind of scrubs an onside kick. It's loose and it rolls out of bounds. Terry Donahue pulling out all stops in this ball game early. You gotta I mean, like the attitude. I mean, no one was looking for an onside kick, anticipating it. He got a high one. He had the perfect opportunity to pick it off, but the guys just missed the chance. And he, he knows his team just missed the golden opportunity. Now watch the kickoff. On the right side, the ball has to go 10 yards. It's up in the air, but everybody from Nebraska, most of them, their backs are turned. He's got a chance right here to pick it off, and his people just don't cover the football. And the new rule this year, you got to have uh, four players on one side of the ball. So it was a good attempt, good try. Nebraska with good field position. First and 10 from the 49. Frazier downfield and the pass incomplete. The intended receiver, number 95, Gerald Armstrong, the high efficiency man in the uh, Nebraska offense. Well, last year he had eight catches and seven of them were for touchdowns. And he has his man right open. I told you, Frazier is a little inconsistent. You look at the ball in the air. Perfect. Pretty good toss. It's a good toss. Right shoulder. Tight end has to get up and turn his body a little bit to make the catch. 
but he should have been able to do it. Armstrong caught six straight passes for six straight touchdowns last year, which set a big eight record on second and ten. Frazier on the option, and he is dragged down just past midfield. The tackle made by Marvin Goodwin, the strong safety, the junior from Camden, New Jersey. And Frazier still not at 100% on that gimpy ankle as we've come to the end of the first quarter. UCLA leads Nebraska 3 to nothing. Welcome back. UCLA leads Nebraska 3 nothing as we get started. Second quarter, and Linda, you know, last year Nebraska really jumped on opponents early, outscoring their opposition 103 to 8. So far this year, 38 to 7. So this is sort of unusual territory for the Cornhuskers to be trailing early in a game. Well, the UCLA Bruins is, will test them, I think, on that offensive and defensive line. Uh, they've already in the first quarter put them in a position to uh, now have to do a little bit of a gut check early in the ball game. They're not going to be able to run roughshod over this Bruin defense the way they've been playing so far. Third down and eight. Frazier goes back to pass. He slipped, throws it up, and it is intercepted by the UCLA Bruin. Bennett is the man who comes up to make the stop. Tommy Bennett, number eight. From the end zone, watch Frazier as he goes down. He slips. Right here, down goes Frazier. Oh. He throws it up. I, I knew it. you were going to say that. And it's Bennett who makes the stop. Take another look. He just, he tries to plant his left foot to set up, and his weight just takes him down. The momentum on that left foot just went out from underneath him. First and 10 from the 45-yard line for the Bruins of UCLA. They fake the pitch, and now Cook comes back, and he's got his receiver. First down inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. 13 yards on the pickup to J.J. Stokes, who averaged 15 yards a catch in the season opener against the University of California. We told you early in this ball game. And for UCLA to be in it and come away with the upset win, they had to create the turnovers. Their defense, very opportunistic on that turnover, making the play. So far, that week off that UCLA had, Lynn, looks like it's doing them the world of good. Much sharper football team in the early part of this game than they were against California. As Hicks takes it off the right side, and Hicks finally driven back after a gain of about two yards to the 40 by Ed Stewart and Baron Miles. Skip Hicks. Freshman from Wichita Falls, Texas, one of five true freshmen seen playing time for the UCLA Bruins. And, and that's why that two weeks before this game helps this team a lot. So many young players. Terry Donahue told us he worked his team on fundamentals, making sure they were shot for the first week. Then he started looking in Nebraska in week number two. Hicks, nine carries, 41 yards so far. Second and seven from the 40-yard line as Wayne Cook checks off at the line of scrimmage. Side, and his receiver Kevin Jordan makes the catch. They'll mark it at the 30 as Jordan has a few words with John Reese, the right side cornerback. Kevin had to go up high for that football, exposed himself momentarily. He was in a pretty dangerous situation. And he's asking to come off right now, as a matter of fact, Lynn. Well, when he goes up for the ball, he catches the ball pretty high, and Reese, number six, will come in underneath him. You watch as he turns. Reese, fiscal guy, comes in just underneath those shoulder pads and makes a good stick. And a little conversation. Cook, four of six, 59 yards, first and 10, 30 yard line. UCLA leads it three to nothing. And Hicks, one more time. I'll tell you what, he's got a lot of patience for being a freshman running back. He looks at his blockers, he looks at the hole, and he's made some good decisions so far. Well, he's just, he's, he's not just attacking the hole. Right and he's just taking the time to see it, watch it open up, and then make the move. I mean, he's got good lateral movement, very shifty. 6'1", 205 pounds. Skip Hicks from Wichita Falls, Texas. Second and six at the 26 is Cook once again checking off. 49, Jeff Ruckman has checked into the game at the fullback spot. As Cook will look near side and throws it behind his intended receiver. Stokes was the intended receiver on the near side. John Reese on the coverage for the University of Nebraska. 
So third down, six yards to go. And Nebraska this year, uh, men made their first defensive change in some 30 years. They went from a 5-2 to a 4-3, trying to get a little bit more speed and quickness. Well, they want to be able to attack more with their defensive unit, to put more pressure, to blitz more, create more turnovers, and give the opp opportunity to the offense. Third and six, as Cook, once again, checking off from the shotgun formation. He is nailed. He didn't get any time as 32 Ed Stewart, the junior from Chicago with his second sack of the year and the third today for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. He is a small linebacker, Roger, at only 6'1", 215 pounds, this junior is. He was a starter in 1992, but you watch him as he just comes powering in from the inside. He had a clean shot at Cook on that play. And Merton's going to attempt the field goal from 53 yards. This is something UCLA didn't want to do the first week against California because they didn't know what the freshman could do. The distance that time was good. He was just wide. So a little bit of a, a gut check right there for Bjorn Merton. The distance was satisfactory, but it Roger Twibel, Lynn Swan back with you at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, the uh, Nebraska team so far having a bit of a struggle uh, against the UCLA Bruins. Uh, Nebraska came in as 10-point favorites today. First quarter uh, statistics uh, shape up like this, Lynn. Yeah, well, you, you look down here, the big one, I think, in the ballgame so far, if you come down to the uh, Nebraska side, you see that one that's actually two turnovers, I believe, uh, for Nebraska, and one in the first quarter, and... I'm sorry, but uh, they've had two in the ball game. And uh, the time of possession, the Bruins have held the ball offensively just a bit longer, moving it down the field. First and 10 from the 35, and the little man Lawrence Phillips, the freshman from West Covina, California. Penalty marker down. Let's go down to John Neighbor. John? Roger, it may not look like it at this time, but this is a stronger, deeper Nebraska team than any of the conference rivals will meet. UCLA gets them because this is a non-conference game. Big eight rules require only 60 players to travel. Nebraska was able to lobby and successfully petition for 74 players on this team. Let's see if they can use the bench to a little bit better satisfaction. Okay, John, thanks so much. John had a long road trip this week from his home here in Pasadena. Yeah, did, did, did he walk jog the or ride shortest, his bicycle? shortest road trip in the history of television sports. Personal foul, defense. Personal foul 59. against the number 95. Jameer Miller was a man that came in, late shot on Tommy Frazier. 16 yards on the pickup by Lawrence Phillips, who is the uh, true freshman from West Covina, California. Now take a look at the left-hand side of your screen. Number 95 is Jameer Miller. He comes in. You'll see the hit right there. But the ball is clearly gone. <laughs> just and up a long just a little time. late, huh? <laughs> First and 10. Pitch back to Phillips. And he gets to the 30. Phillips. Six foot, 200 pound freshman, didn't play in the first game against North Texas State, was suspended for uh, one game. As he is being pressed into duty because of the injury to Calvin Jones. Jones, uh, who rushed for over 1,200 yards a year ago, was uh, injured in the game against North Texas State when they were leading 49 to 7. Uh, strained some uh, ligaments in his knee. They're hoping to have him back in time for the Big Eight season opener two weeks from now. Second and seven from the 31, and the movement on the left side of the line. On the left side over there, that was uh, Gerald Armstrong, number 95. I don't, I don't understand what Armstrong, why Armstrong just got up, and 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 just started to walk away like that. Brain lock. Well, he's a tight end. A tight end can move. All he had to do was reset himself. As I said, brain lock. <laughs> he made a mistake, and then he didn't know how to correct it. You know, I, I am surprised. I'm very, very surprised so far in this ball game that Nebraska has looked so sloppy. Yeah, they have. I mean, there's no other way to describe it. Second and 12 from the 36. 10.52 to go first half. Frazier throwing downfield, and it's behind his intended receiver, Gerald Armstrong. A former walk-on from Ponca, Nebraska, and want to remind you next Saturday, top 10 teams square off in regional action here on ABC's College Football. Most of you will see the UCLA Bruins take on Stanford or fourth-ranked Notre Dame tackle Purdue, plus other regional action. I'd like you to check your local listings for the game on your ABC stations and call your cable operator for games available on pay-per-view. That's all next Saturday at 2.30 Central, 12.30 Pacific.
right here on ABC Sports. Third and 12 from the 36-yard line. Three wide receivers for Nebraska. And Frazier wants a timeout. UCLA has about eight people, nine people up on the line of scrimmage. Nebraska, One of the two. things, Lynn, that the... Uh, that the UCLA staff uh, told us they wanted to do was try to get as many quick and as athletic people as they could on the field, and they were really going to go to two down linemen on their defensive front with Case and Warner, and then bring in Jameer Miller and, and bulk up the linebackers. And a number of teams have been going to that kind of defensive front and alignment to counter uh, the, the passing attacks, the offensive attacks that many teams are using throughout college football these days. And it is doing, they're doing a fine job with it, this afternoon for UCLA. They're showing much more speed, much more quickness. Uh, they're getting pressure on Frazier, yet they've got the people on the outside covering the receivers, making sure that the option isn't getting upfield. That's Bob Fields, yeah. defensive coordinator for the UCLA Bruins. Bob's been there for 17 years. Yeah, Bob told us, he says, we just can't take these big guys head on. We've got to try to out quick them, if you will. And some other games later today, all Pacific time. Florida State, North Carolina, Stanford, Colorado tonight. Cal and Temple came back at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia, and then Oregon State, Washington State, the lone pack. Third down and 12, 36-yard line. Nebraska now with one timeout left in the first half. Out of the shotgun, they'll throw it quickly to the near side to Corey Dixon, and Dixon is stripped down from behind. 66 London Woodfin, the junior from Silmar, California, really showed some speed coming from behind to catch the elusive Corey Dixon. London Woodfin is 6'2", 270 pounds, and he did a great job starting to come in. Then when Corey Dixon, number two, got the ball, came to the inside, he looked up and saw the big guy. You know how I saw him? He felt the cold breeze of a shadow <laughs> moving in on him. The shadow. The shadow. <laughs> Nebraska will have to attempt a field goal. Byron Bennett, Byron Bennett will kick it from 45 yards. His uh, long field goal in his career is 47. Four out of nine from this range, and that is not good. Whether that was just a bad kick, somebody might have gotten a hand on it. We'll take a look when we come back to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. UCLA leads it three to nothing. The Bennett field goal attempt from 45 yards out. Does someone get a hand on it? Look at the middle of the UCLA line. A hand coming up, and it looks, Lynn, like it might have been London Woodfin. Number 66, yes, who, who got may a piece have of it. gotten a piece of that ball. It wasn't a very high kick he'll, believe me, to start uh, with. Believe me, on the coach's film and in the, in the meetings, he'll be in there saying, yeah, I got a piece yeah, of it. That was yeah, me. Absolutely. <laughs> Wayne Cook, 4 of 7, 59 yards, and he'll bring UCLA up to the 28-yard line. First and 10 with 10 minutes to go. Sharman Shaw has checked into the game for UCLA, and he makes the carry across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Shaw, the sophomore from Los Angeles, has been out with an injury as Trev Alberts and Ed Stewart were in there on the tackle. And just one of a number of players that have been injured on both of these teams. Uh, Shaw has been banged up. Darren Washington, their leading rusher from a year ago, and their leading rusher versus Cal, out with an ankle injury. Also in there, Jeff Ruckman, 49, a true freshman from Porterville, California, at the fullback spot on second and seven from the 31-yard line. And Shaw will get it. Got some more. Charmont Shaw runs into his own man, then runs into a Nebraska tackler at the 46-yard line. Mike Minner, after 17 yards on the pickup. He goes to the right side behind big number 68, Vaughn Parker and Matt Simpson. Parker, number 68, Outland Trophy candidate, Lombardi Trophy candidate. Helps clear the way downfield. Take another look. They do a good job. They get a man pulling to the outside. A few people miss on the inside, and these are the kind of plays UCLA wants to break in long drives to control the clock. They've done that so far. First and 10, 49-yard line. Their seventh first down so far today. In 92, they were last in the Pac-10 in first downs. Cook got to use his athletic ability, and he throws into a crowd. That was a bad pass, bad decision, and a penalty marker down at the 40-yard line. You got a great idea of, of the lack of foot speed that Cook has yeah. on that play. I mean, he's, he's sprinting to the sideline, looking downfield just a bit, 
and the big men are closing in quick. See what the flag is all about. Holding of an eligible receiver on a forward pass play. 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. I heard holding and an ineligible receiver. Nonetheless, it's on Nebraska. But let's take a look at Cook as he's rolling out, trying to get away from pressure. Now, that's Trev Alberts, who's just coming in on him. A number, a number of he's going to lose that race every day. Yeah, Bruce Moore, number 90, defensive tackle. First and 10, 41 yard line. First man through is Milliner and Trev Alberts, 34 there to make the tackle. Alberts is uh, one of a number of Nebraska players that have already graduated and uh, he is uh, taking some graduate courses, uh, thinking about law school, also thinking about the National Football League draft. Well, there are there are five players, uh, I think four players from Nebraska, or five players, excuse me, from Nebraska who have graduated already this August. And Alberts is uh, one of them. Speech communication. Said he's also taking a bowling class this fall, just to kind of lighten the load a little bit. And second and six. Some fancy footwork right there by 33 Sharman Shaw. 12 yards on the pickup. And so far, the UCLA offensive line has really dominated the Nebraska defensive front. Well, look at Shaw taking the handoff. Excellent vision here and finding the cutback. And then just breaking the tackle of number 10, Mike Hunter, a redshirt freshman, to get to the outside and pick up a few more and look like he was about to run right out of someone else's arms. First and 10, 25-yard line. Nebraska's missed a lot of tackles so far today. Shaw inside the 20. We mentioned a moment ago about the Cornhuskers who graduated already and Alberts, Tremaine Bell, Troy Branch. Raymakers. Raymakers, that's interesting. He came out as a Prop 48, so he obviously did a really good job. And Troy Branch has a scholarship already to Creighton University Graduate School. There's two of the guys, 67, Kevin Raymakers. Lost 30 pounds this year, increased his vertical leap four inches and runs a 1.6 in the 10-yard dash, which is as fast as Calvin Jones and some of the running backs. <laughs> he had an interesting quote. He said, last year I looked like Tarzan and played like Gene. Now they've got to take care of that blood that's uh, on his arm there. That's why he came out of the game. Second and five from the 20-yard line. Yeah. Shaw tackled from behind inside the 15, Trev Alberts. 6'4 and 240. Chase down Sharmon Shaw, but so far the running back combination of Skip Hicks and Sharmon Shaw have done the job. Albert is a Butkus candidate. Watch him take on a blocker here. Like he should, he takes him on, sees the ball carrier come inside, releases, then turns back upfield to make the tackle. It's good news, bad news. So the bad far, news is <laughs> UCLA is getting yards with Trev Alberts, and the good news is making stops. UCLA has rushed for 82 yards so far today. The eighth play of their drive, and Milliner, the first man through, gets down to the six-yard line. Nebraska has rushed for just 40 so far today as the UCLA Bruins using some clock now with 6.35 to go, first half, and they lead it three to nothing. Ruckman has checked into the game. The freshman in the backfield along with Skip Hicks. So you have two true freshmen, and Hicks and Ruckman. Jordan's in motion. We'll give it to Skip Hicks. Can he get outside? Touchdown! UCLA! Skip Hicks! And I think Terry Donahue has found somebody to carry the football. Hicks will be coming right at you. Look at the line blocking on the inside. They block down, try and seal off. But right here, it's Hicks, number 20, just outrunning Lorenzo Brinkley, number five, to the outside. Is he a good-looking running back? I mean, he's 18 years old. 
he is so fluid, he is making Nebraska look like they're not even in this ball game. Merton to attempt the point after. And it's good. 6.06 to go first half. UCLA leads Nebraska 10 to nothing. Chiefs got beat 30 to nothing by Houston last week, so they are anxious to get him back on the field. Monday Night Football, Denver and Kansas City, always a great AFC matchup. Merton to kick it off. Dixon back deep and a low line drive kick will get into the end zone, and it did. Let's go back to the touchdown that Hicks scored. Now, I want you to watch Jordan as he goes inside. Now he's got Troy Dumas over the top, or excuse me, Reese number six. He hits him, causes a little traffic jam there with Dumas. Now when Hicks comes to the outside, they are just a step behind and can't make the play. Uh, you wide receivers. I mean, that's a finesse block if I ever saw one, hey, huh? listen, listen. It doesn't have to be a knockdown. <laughs> it just has to slow him up enough for the back to do his thing. Scoring, and we take credit for it. Scoring drive. Nine plays, 72 yards, 355, and going absolutely nowhere is Lawrence Phillips. Nebraska, 382.2 yards per game in 1992. That was their second straight NCAA rushing crowd. Eighth in the last 13 years and 10th overall. And so far today, they've rushed for 42 yards. Their offensive line is having the same lack of results that the UCLA offensive line had two weeks ago against Cal early in the ball game. Second and eight from the 22-yard line. Frazier on the option. We'll get it to Phillips. And Phillips is dragged down at the 29-yard line. Nice play over there by Robert Gamble, senior from Overland Park, Kansas, who comes up to make the stop. I mentioned Phillips, a freshman from West Covina, California, six foot, 200 pounder, one of just a number of players who are on that uh, California to Nebraska pipeline. Seems like every year they get one or two or three pretty good football players out of the state of California. Third down and one from the 29. Phillips got the first down and about three yards to spare. The uh, Nebraska to California connection, well, 27 starters in the last 20 years. There are five on the roster this year. And outside of the state of Nebraska, the largest alumni group lives here in California, better than 11,500. And uh, Nebraska got 10,000 tickets for the game, and they sold 9,600. And there's a sea of red, folks, I'll tell you, at the uh, north end zone here. Two radio stations in the state of California carry Nebraska football. So does the station in Las Vegas. So a lot of Cornhusker fans out here as wide open, down the middle, inside the 40 to the 36-yard line. Gerald Armstrong, 30 yards on the reception. Well, you knew it was just a matter of time. They have come to that play about three times, three or four times this afternoon so far. It's the second time they've completed it. And every time, Armstrong has been wide open in the zone coverage of UCLA's. First and 10 from the 36-yard line. Armstrong came into the game with two catches for 16 yards and a touchdown. And that running play gains about three. We talked earlier about that unusual statistic on Gerald Armstrong, where last year he caught six consecutive passes for touchdowns, which set a big eight record, tied an NCAA record held by Carlos Carson, uh, LSU. Later went on to play for the Kansas City Chiefs. But the interesting thing about Armstrong, he came as a 185-pound walker. Five years later, he's a 225-pound starting tight end. I'll tell you about that weight room in a minute. Yeah. Second and six from the 32. Frazier runs the option awfully nice as he gets to the 25-yard line and enough for the first down as Robert Gamble, 24, came up to make the tackle. How big and strong did they get at Nebraska? Right? I, I, I will tell you, I went to Nebraska this August and just talked with Tom Osborne, visited around with him a little bit. They've got a weight room that's second to none, and these young men take a great deal of pride in the amount of time that they spend in that, in that weight room, and they have a tremendous work ethic. You look at the number of Outland Trophy winners, the reputation they have for offensive line and their strength, and it's because they spend that extra time on their own in that weight room. First and 10, 25-yard line. Lawrence Phillips gets himself about four. That now, weight room is 30,000 square feet, isn't it? It's big, bigger than your house, my house. <laughs> Everybody else's house in this booth put together. 
I tell you, most, there are probably a large, the largest number of uh, degrees in agribusiness on this football team, more than any other degrees. Hey, you're from the state of the basket. And so, you know, when you're a big kid, having that strong back doesn't hurt in the business. Furthest penetration for the Nebraska Cornhuskers at the 21-yard line with 3.05 to go. Shovel pass inside. Abdul Muhammad is knocked out of bounds at the five-yard line. 16 yards on the pickup for this junior from Compton, California. Travis Collier ran him out of bounds. They ran this play last week successfully. They do it off the sprint action. Very successful. Coming back to the inside. Muhammad looking for a little help downfield. Gets him in just inside the five-yard line. Timeout by UCLA with 2.59 to go. First half. The Bruins lead the Cornhuskers 10 to nothing. And the UCLA wants to take a timeout as Nebraska's got something rolling right now. Well, tonight, Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks aren't sleepless in Seattle, folks. They're here in the network premiere of Osborne talking to his team. They struggled a little bit with Texas Tech last week. They trailed 21-20 with about four and a half to go in the third quarter. But as Nebraska can do, they come up with some big plays. They sort of wear you out physically. And all of a sudden, uh, they scored 17 points in about a two and a half minute span and went on to a convincing victory over Texas Tech 50 to 27. They won their first game of the year 76 to 14 over North Texas. This UCLA team though, it's not North Texas. It's not Texas Tech. It's a pretty good football team. UCLA is not going to give up, and they're not going to fall down in the second half of this ball game. Uh, nor are they going to say, well, you know, we had a pretty good first half, and we just have to do the same thing and come back out. They're going to have to improve in the second half to stop Nebraska and make sure they come out on top in this football game. Nebraska is a patient football team when it comes to their offensive line blocking and dominance. First and goal from the five-yard line, just the one back, Lawrence Phillips with Corey Dixon split to the near side. Double tight end alignment. On the option, Lawrence Phillips busts in for the touchdown. The freshman from nearby West Covina, California takes it in from five yards out. A penalty marker is down. As you see Tommy Frazier limping, I'll tell you, he injured that ankle on the first play of the first game this year against North Texas, and he took a hit on the option. Face mask will go against UCLA. Touchdown is good, but the injury to Tommy Frazier of great concern to the University of Nebraska because the rest of their quarterbacks, Veland is out with a knee injury, a torn patellar tendon, and Brooke Beringer, from Goodland, Kansas, has got some tendonitis in his elbow. right elbow. That's and then right. Ben Roots, who's another freshman quarterback, is coming off arthroscopic, or excuse me, uh, knee surgery last spring for an ACL, and he's very iffy. They'd only go to him in a must situation. They're like the walking wounded. Yeah. <laughs> Frazier took a pretty good pop as he came out on that option. So if Frazier can't go, Bariner, number 18, would come into the game. That's the problem with an ankle. Lynn, you know all the years that you've played. Once you, It's the worst injury you can have because you get to a point where you feel like you can play, and then you ding it again, and it just never goes away the whole season. The defense will be enforced on the PAT half the distance. Dead ball, non-contact foul will be enforced on the kickoff. So they'll get half the distance on the point after, and then UCLA will be penalized again on the kickoff as Byron Bennett comes on to attempt the point after. So far, 14 of 15. He gets a lot of work uh, playing for the University of Nebraska. Kicking extra points, and that one's good. So with 2.54 to go first half, UCLA leads Nebraska by a field goal, 10-7. On the touchdown, it was the option working to perfection. We'll take a look. Look at Frazier. He comes out, looks for his man Phillips. He gets the pitch there just before contact is made. 
And Phillips does a good job of putting his head down. Now watch the hit on Frazier, number 26. Donovan Gallatin is a man who comes in, and he just explodes chasing it. And there's a face mask that was called on the same play. Yeah, and see his and left ankle. And he just ankle. rips him down, and you see he's falling down on his left yeah. ankle. Well, I'm sure they'll tape it back up again, annoying the competitiveness of this uh, young man, Tommy Frazier from Bradenton, Florida, who broke into the starting lineup in the sixth game a year ago and really established himself as the quarterback of the future for the uh, University of Nebraska. A kid that he, he throws the ball just as well as he runs with it, and he, he does both of those things so awfully well. And in college football, when you've got a guy that can run the option, he's got good size at 6'4", 200, he can drop back and throw the football too. I and mean, those kind of guys are tough to beat. And I think in, in, in the near future, he'll spend a little more time working on his consistency mm -hmm. as a passer. You know, Nebraska doesn't throw the ball that much, and he's only a 44% completion passer. And their system, for him to be the complete player and get the maximum out of what this offense does, he's got to be closer to that 60% range as a, as a com, as for a completion percentage. Nebraska, because of the penalty, will kick it off right at midfield. So see what Bennett does with it here. This gets a little bit of it, and it's fielded. Yeah, Gandy Colbert gets it across the 15 to the 16-yard line. The freshman brings it back as coming up at uh, halftime on the Prudential Halftime Report. John Saunders with scores and highlights. Uh, we'll talk to Colorado head football coach Bill McCartney. The uh, Buffaloes take on Stanford tonight. And the Ivy League kicks off uh, a new season. And I uh, want to remind you, one of the world's most enduring corporate symbols, the Goodyear Blimp Eagle, based in Carson, California, has been providing these beautiful aerial pictures. Goodyear Blimps have been flying over major sporting events since 1925. I'll tell you what, you take a look at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, perfect day for football. Temperature in the low to mid-70s. First and 10 for the 16-yard line. And a gain of a couple right there is... Uh, UCLA will play it very close to the vest. Charlotte Blackie almost didn't get a handle on that football. You know, one of the things that uh, UCLA, and we chronicled this last year, when they started out Lynn with the three wins, they went through the five-game losing streak where they had all the injuries, and then they come back and win their final three. They had to play a lot of young people. So they've got 26 guys back from a year ago that started games, yet they lost so many key people, especially in the quarterback spot. And a real rebuilding year. Tommy Malich would have been a senior this yeah. year, leading, and, and continuity is so important in that position. A little miscue right there as Cook is dumped. Fourth sack for the University of Nebraska. That's back inside the 10. Bruce Moore, number 90, and Terry Keneally, number 99. Moore at 6'6", 240. They feel like he can really rush the passer. A lot of quickness. Rangy player. He was about 215 pounds when he first came to Nebraska. He's up to 250. He beats a double team quick to the inside. Saw number 99, Terry Keneally, also in on that play. 18 sacks so far this year for the Nebraska defense. Third and 15 from the 11. Handoff up the middle. Hicks. Hicks. He'll be very close to the first down. He tripped at the 26-yard line, but what a beautiful bit of running. 17 yards on the pickup by this freshman from Wichita Falls, Texas, where UCLA's always had great success going into the Lone Star State and recruiting. And watch him as he goes through the hole. He looks like he stops for a moment, and then number 36, James Milliner, right there with a good block, protecting him, pushing out number 48, Mike Anderson, the middle linebacker, and clearing a path to the outside. And he got the first down. Lynch, you notice the Heisman move, the, the little stiff arm? that too, he, too soon for that one. Yeah, too soon? Okay. <laughs> too soon. First to 10, 28-yard line, out of the shotgun. The inside handoff to Hicks. He's got a hole. Hicks across the 40 to the 42-yard line, and that is another UCLA first down, 15 yards on that pickup. The Bruins with one timeout left, and the clock now under a minute at 58 seconds to go in the first half. Oh, I'll tell you, big man on the line, 6'8", 315 pounds, Jonathan Ogden is just leaning on people, moving them all over the field. Wayne Cook from the shotgun. Clock running. Stokes breaks two tackles. 
Great move at the 35, and he's finally pulled down at the 27. It could have been a late hit on Nebraska. No flag as Toby Wright makes the tackle, and Stokes is still down on the ground as there was a late shot to his back by a Nebraska defender. I don't know. I, I, I thought it was number 14, Baron Miles, who came over, but he just took number three, Toby Wright, apart twice on the one play. Take a look, bottom of your screen, that's J.J. Stokes, simple pattern, he's going against John Reese right there, he turns him in, and Reese fails to make the catch as he spins on him. Now he fakes out right, he's gonna put a move on someone else, comes across there, fakes him out again, he's going by, and there. right there. Raymakers. That was Raymakers. That's late. That's a penalty, Number 67. Folks. That's a penalty that didn't get called. The man was down and Raymakers came and hit him. It and people wouldn't say it was a spear because you didn't see the helmet go in the back, but it's the equivalent of a spear because he was already on the bound, on the ground. Now the officials have given a sideline warning to Nebraska. Now Raymakers is 6'4", 270 pounds. He's, as I mentioned, he's lost 30 from a year ago, Lynn. Now he's an intense player, but he's right there. Yeah, well that's the helmet. Just... And you know, matter of fact, he got his own player's knee on that play. Stokes, three receptions, 49 yards, 39 seconds. And the clock running now. Left to go first half. The Bruins with one timeout remaining. Try to get Merton down in field goal range. Cook will try to run it up the middle. And at the 26-yard line, Terry Keneally. The junior from Hyannis, Nebraska, brings him down. Also, Raymakers there as the clock continues to run. And Cook trying to get his team set to run another play. They've got one timeout left. It's down to eight. Now he just throws it down. And they don't use the timeout. They don't use the timeout. And with six seconds left to go, they're now in a position with not enough time to run a play and, and then try to kick the field goal. Well, so gonna Merton's going to have to come out now. He has to come out now. Six seconds on the clock. He can't take a chance to uh, move the ball downfield at all. So Merton will come out. He's made one from 39 today, missed one from 53, which had the distance and was just wide. This attempt, 44 yards. A six foot, 203 pound freshman from Centerville, Virginia. Pernicki's the snapper. Jeff Clark will hold it. And that's no good. So Merton has missed his second. And time has expired in the first half from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena with the underdog, UCLA Bruins. Leading the Nebraska Cornhuskers by the score of 10 to 7. Nebraska in the first half of the ball game. And defensively, they missed an awful lot of tackles. Let's give Hicks a little credit. He's doing a tremendous job running the football for UCLA. And the line's blocking very well for UCLA, but the Nebraska defense is not tackling very strong this afternoon. The kickoff. Down, and Nebraska will feel it inside the five-yard line and across the 25 for the Cornhuskers of Nebraska, Baron Miles. And that's where Nebraska will start funding. We take a look at the halftime statistics. And as you can see, the rush yard that's highlighted there, this is a big number for UCLA right here, 122 as they beat Nebraska in that particular stat. The turnovers for Nebraska have given UCLA the opportunities in this ball game, and also time of possession and number of plays, UCLA has a slight edge there. Lawrence Phillips off the left side, and the freshman from uh, just down the road in West Covina, California, decided to go to Nebraska because he's a running back, and what do they do at Nebraska, Lynn? They run the football. <laughs> they run the football. Or at least prior to this game, they're running the football. Well, you make a good point there because they have not been very successful running the ball today, and of course, uh, that is the bread and butter. Three out of every four plays for Nebraska are rushing plays. Second and three from the 35-yard line. Frazier will pitch it back to Phillips. Frazier took a big hit there 
And at the 41-yard line, a first down for the University of Nebraska. Travis Collier made the stop. Now, top of the game, this is what we said Nebraska had to do the win. Run, run, run. They haven't done it offensively. UCLA's defense is all over the place and all over them. They've given up the big play, although it didn't hurt them because a touchdown by Hicks was called back. They have avoided the alignment mistakes on defense, but they have let UCLA in this ball game. They have the lead. They've been playing strong in this game, and they have to believe. Loose ball, and UCLA win. has come and up with it. UCLA comes up with another turnover. Ninety-five, Jameer Miller, who set out the opening game this year for a suspension because of troubles he encountered away from the football program last spring, comes up with a big play. And that was just a miscue. Schlesinger was supposed to get the handoff, Lynn. It doesn't look like he even what he, he was supposed to get. He didn't grab it. And if Frazier was supposed to pull it out, he didn't pull it out. He just kind of left it there. Listen, Nebraska led the nation in turnover margin last year, 1.64 a game. And so far today, they have turned it over three times as UCLA has it first and 10 from the 40-yard line. As Hicks will take it right up the middle, Skip Hicks, a carry of about three. Well, before we told you about UCLA, they had to possess the football. They haven't dominated in that category, but they have done it. They've only scored on 33% of their possessions, although they missed the two field goals and had a touchdown call back. So we'll call that a wash. On defense, they have forced the Huskers to drive the field, 82 yards to score their only touchdown, and they have created the turnovers, this possession as a result of the third turnover by Nebraska. Second and seven from the 37-yard line. Hicks has now rushed 14 times for 87 yards as Cook checks off at the line of scrimmage. And Ruckman and Hicks will just flip-flop, and they give it to Hicks, and a penalty marker whistle blown. Looks like they took too much time. So Wayne Cook trying to check off at the line of scrimmage. And, you know, you've got to, you know, really sympathize with Cook, the uh, junior quarterback from Newberry Park, California. Dead ball. Delay a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Last week was his first full game since he was a senior in high school. And I think, Lynn, looking at the Cal game, and so far today, decision-making, not so much physical ability, but just decision-making on the field is a little bit rusty. It is rusty, and Homer Smith, the offensive coordinator for UCLA, drives that asset that that, that talent the quarterback has to have home, and he's worked on them continuously. And for the fifth time today, the sack, Terry Keneally was in on Wayne Cook. Let's go down to John Neighbors. Thanks, Roger. As the Nebraska team came out of the locker room just at the halftime, they looked like they'd just been given a serious talking to in the woodshed. They were very severe. Their eyes weren't meeting anybody else's. They were looking straight forward. And it's really doubly frustrating that they had that major turnover here. Early in the first half, or late in the first half, I should say, the defensive coordinators were feeling that they weren't missing assignments, that the plays were mixing it up a little bit and confusing the Nebraska defense. Well, Keneally, just a little bit late as Cook did get rid of that football, so it's third and 12 from the 42. But once again, Cook under pressure. As he goes out of the shotgun, and look out for Alberts. He's able to get the pass away, and the reception, it's incomplete. John Reese on the coverage. It looked like the receiver over on the far side for UCLA had a really good chance at catching the football. Mike Wynn, number yep. 81, had a chance, although I think the pressure on Cook forced him to throw the ball and didn't get enough juice on it. The ball looked like it was dying before it got to win number 81 and then allowed Reese to come in and put a hand in there and knock it away. Wind has uh, been out with an injury during the uh, the two weeks since the Cal game and just started practicing again yesterday as Shager will stand back inside the 45 to punt the football. And that ball will not be down. It goes in the end zone, 42 yards on the punt by Darren Shager, and UCLA leads Nebraska 10-7. 160 pounds are wide receiver, but when you're not catching the ball, what do you do? If you're in Nebraska, you're blocked, and he'll get credit for a knockdown, and the wide receivers of Nebraska keep their own stats for knockdown, and he took down 6'3", 220-pound sophomore Donnie Edwards, a linebacker. To the outside, Phillips will get it across the 25 to the 28-yard line. Gain of about eight yards there for the freshman from West Covina. Robert Gamble and London Woodfin 
come up to make the tackle for the Bruins of UCLA. The uh, secondary for UCLA allowed only 135 yards per game last year. That was their best since 1967, but their weakness was defending against the run, and consequently, that's how people came at them last year. Second and two from the 28-yard line. Phillips going absolutely nowhere as 54 and Kosi Littleton was there and dropped him for a loss of three. And how much do they miss the preseason Heisman Trophy candidate, Calvin Jones? Well, you can see his numbers that he produced for them over a career. But I think beyond the numbers, beyond what he could do carrying the football, they miss the confidence they had in him. And they probably miss his leadership and the stability he brought to that offensive unit. They're hoping Jones will be back for the Colorado State game next week, if not that, for their Big 8 opener. Third down and four from the 26. Nebraska three of six so far. And Abdul Muhammad makes the catch for the first down at the 37-yard line. Muhammad's a great story. He's from Compton, California, and was involved in an unfortunate incident this summer, a drive-by shooting in July outside his apartment complex. He was shot in the buttock, and the bullet was so deep that they decided not to take it out and uh, came back, rehabbed, and is back playing. So, uh, very lucky young man, Abdul Muhammad. First and 10, 37-yard line. Frazier, down the middle, ripped that pass right in there. Beautiful catch by Tremaine Bell, number 80, out of Chicago, Illinois, Tommy Bennett, on the coverage and 17 yards on the pickup. Frazier to Tremaine Bell, and Tommy Frazier has either run or pass for a touchdown in 10 of the 11 games he's played in. Tremaine Bell was a split end, picked up a little size at 220 pounds, converted to a tight end. First and 10, 47 yard line. Phillips, gain of about six yards there as he gets to the 40, and this looks like the Nebraska offense, Lynn, that you're used to seeing. You get the defense so concerned with that run and the option, and then you hit the pass for about 15 yards downfield. There's a player down, looks like London Woodfin. London Woodfin, number 66. But Nebraska's offensive line coming out, with the exception of the turnover, Roger, looks like they've got a little more snap. You know, and they're much more crisp. Look at the offensive line opening up holes. Schlesinger, you look at Schlesinger, fullback. Corey Schlesinger, number 40, the fullback coming in, widening the hole, executing a little bit better now. Nebraska coaches up in the uh, press box. Nebraska came into this game averaging 555 yards per game in the two games. And but their, their offensive coordinator was a man on the far right, Frank Solich up there. College football on ABC Sports is brought to you by Lexus Luxury Automobiles, the result of a relentless pursuit of perfection. And by New Sierra. It's not just antifreeze, it's safety freeze. At the Rose Bowl, Pasadena, California, I'm Roger Twibell, along with Lynn Swan, John Neighbor. UCLA leads Nebraska 10-7 with 10.42 to go, third quarter on an absolutely perfect day. No clouds above, temperature about 73 degrees as Number 66, London Woodfin, will get up and walk off the field under his own power. We, we had a shot of the uh, Nebraska coaches up in the booth, and one of them is their offensive coordinator, Frank Solich, who was a running back for Nebraska in 1965, Roger. And in that year, he had the single-game rushing record, here there on the far right, of 204 yards against Air Force. That record held for 10 years. Schlesinger was the first man through. They don't go to the fullback too often, but he looks like he's got enough for the first down. Shane Jasper, number 90, and Sally Asaya, number 55, in on the tackle. And Asaya just found out yesterday that he was eligible to play. UCLA is on the quarter system. School doesn't even start till September 30th. He just finished summer school and completed the test and got his eligibility for this year. First and 10, 36-yard line. Phillips and a penalty marker down inside. Penalty marker down after the gain of about seven yards by Lawrence Phillips. Looked like he tried to take that penalty flag and, and hit Brendan Stye in the head with it. Well, Brenda Stye is another one of the uh, California connection from Yorba Linda, California. 6'4", 300-pounder who uh, bench presses 500 pounds. But you know, he lost some weight. Then he went from 315 to 300 and dropped his body fat about 6%. 
That's, that's significant when you go from 315 it, it to 300. Is. I mean, you would become think one was, of the yeah. fastest linemen on the team. You wouldn't think it was a big deal, but. Still first down. Now Nebraska will have to overcome that setback. Well, Wiegert goes 300. Stye goes 300. Malin, 275. Zadeska, 300. Lundberg, 300. Across the front for Nebraska. How'd that small guy at 275 get in know. at center? Snuck in there. First and 20. At the 45, Frazier, the inside shovel patch, and absolutely nothing there. 59 for the UCLA Bruins. George Case, the wild man. <laughs> Look at him. There he is. Eight tackles. He's looking for somebody to butt heads with. Yeah, eight tackles coming in the game. I mean, he's been... He's supposed to be blocked, I should say, up front here. They got the little shovel pass coming, but he sees it, reads it, slides to the inside, gets away from Bendon Stye to make the stop. Former linebacker, you, you know, could guess the, that. The only experience he had prior to this game was against Cal. He played against Cal in 1992, and then started against Cal two weeks ago here. And that's been his total experience until today. Frazier's hit his last six passes and is able to get away and gets it. Inside the 40 to the 38 yard line. Donovan Gallatin, 26, the senior from Torrance, California, was the guy that had a hold of him momentarily. And in Kosi Littleton finally finished him off. Well, we get a chance to see Tommy Frazier with a bad ankle. Still staying after it, keeping his balance, getting away from a certain sack to pick up positive yards. You can imagine what he can do to a football team when he's completely healthy and whole. There's Gallatin, who this summer served as a bodyguard to Gabriela Sabatini in a tennis tournament out here in Los Angeles. Third down and 13, the option. Frazier takes the hit, but Phillips is to the outside, inside the 30, and a penalty marker is down. A penalty marker is down as Phillips, a couple of yards shy of first down territory. Phillips looked like he had that straight arm going, but it may have grabbed the face mask on the play. They called it against UCLA. Ooh. Jameer Miller was the man over there. Take a look and watch Phillips. He comes up, he gets a straight arm right there, right in the face mask, and it's a double face mask as he reaches in and grabs his face mask, Marvin Goodwin. So Goodwin and Phillips exchanged face mask greetings on first and 10. This is Phillips inside the 20 to the 18 yard line. Robert Gamble and Travis Collier in there on the stop. What UCLA is trying to do is shake up Nebraska just a bit. Every time they run the option, or just about every time they run the option, I've noticed the man who is responsible for the quarterback makes sure he goes in and gets a good stick. Now while Frazier got that ball off in plenty of time, on the option two plays ago, Miller, Jameer Miller, 95, came in and really buried his head, sh shoulders into his chest. Second and six from the 18, Phillips trying to get outside. Not much room working. Jameer Miller, 95, one of the players to come up and meet him. Carrico Quinn was also out there. There's a look at Miller who, uh, along with Bruce Walker, got into some trouble. Walker was in, uh, suspended for the entire year. And uh, Miller suspended for the one game. As I mentioned, school starts September 30th. The status of Walker is uncertain. He will not play football this year or next spring. He does have a year of eligibility if he'd like to come back for a fifth year. Third down and two at the 14-yard line. Phillips, it's going to be close. He took a dive at it. This is where the Nebraska Cornhuskers usually start wearing teams down. You like to try to stay as close as you can to them early in the game because sooner or later, those big 300-pound offensive linemen, and they'll alternate them on occasion, they just start wearing and wearing and wearing that smaller UCLA defense down. First down. First and 10 at the 11-yard line. Frazier wants to throw it. Touchdown. Guess who? Mr. Efficiency, Gerald Armstrong. 
second touchdown catch of the year for Armstrong. Tremendous ball handling execution by Frazier. Watch here the play action. He has everybody wondering where the ball's at. He drifts to the outside. The tight end comes open. He throws it behind defensive linemen who are looking back into the secondary and not looking at the quarterback. Bennett, the point after, and it's good. And Nebraska has taken the lead for the first time today. And this is the reason why UCLA needed to score on 75% of their possessions. Nebraska coming back and taking the lead 14 to 10. Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. This is the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. And the Nebraska Cornhuskers have just taken their first lead of the day, 14 to 10 over UCLA with 6.56 to go, third quarter. Score and drive, 14 plays, 79 yards, 5.50 was the time. And Frazier was 4 of 4 for 40 yards in the touchdown. And two receptions today and one touchdown. That's right on his uh, ratio. Gerald Armstrong as Colbert will take it inside the five. This kid's got tremendous speed. Terry Donahue told us the other day that they were going to have him return punts, but uh, they decided to let him return kickoffs to be just a little safer. Scoring summary goes like this. Merton with the 37-yard uh, field goal after, excuse me, 39-yard field goal. And then Skip Hicks, who'd had a run called back earlier because of a penalty, gets in from six yards out to make it 10 to nothing. And then Nebraska scores with Lawrence Phillips. It was 10-7 at the half, and then Gerald Armstrong. The touchdown reception from Tommy Frazier, 14 to 10, and that's where we stand with 6.50. Left to go, third quarter. Terry Donahue's team opened up against Cal two weeks ago, a conference game. They lost that, 27-25. Nebraska 2-0, and Cook, play action. Stokes makes the catch, he was out of bounds. When they lined up, Roger, I looked over there because I know that UCLA has been looking for the mismatch in terms of height between Stokes and Miles all day. Miles only 5'8", Stokes 6'4", and he lined up on the top of the screen. Looked like it might have been zone coverage, but it was man-to-man. -man. Stokes just lost his concentration, didn't make the big effort to stay in bounds with that catch. UCLA on second and ten will go with three wide receivers. Cook has missed on five of his last six. Second man through is Hicks. Head off to Skip Hicks. He's not able to slide the tackle that time. As he gets to the 25-yard line, Wright. gain of about three. Toby Wright, the rover back, and Kevin Raymakers. Raymakers. You know, Wright led them in tackles in the first half with ten. You don't usually like one of your secondary guys leading you in tackles. Third and six. Yeah, but he, Toby Wright, number four, Troy Dumas are in that secondary with linebacker attitudes. If they were about 20 pounds heavier and a few more inches, they might be all Americans on the outside of backers. Call it 36 from the 26 yard line. Cook with pressure from outside, throws it underneath. The pass is complete. Pass is complete. And it should be enough for a first down. Mike Wynn, 81, the junior from Portland, Oregon, makes the catch. 12 yards on the pickup. Boy, I'll tell you, that's a magical reception, but Wayne Cook is getting some good protection. You see a few red pants being up in it there. And you look at the catch. He throws it over. Boy, you can't tell. First and 10, 33-yard line. Charmon Shaw, and he leans forward to the 39. Troy Dumas, the junior from Cheyenne, Wyoming, came up to make the stop, and there are two UCLA players down on the field. Terry, Brian Richards, 99, and James Christensen, 62, the center. Richards, the tight end. And while they tend to those injured players, we'll take a pause with 5.33 to go in the third. And now for some this has already been helped off. That's Richards there. That's a position where UCLA has really been decimated as Christensen now being helped off. Brian Allen, the starting tight end, 
is hurt and he's out for at least a month. Richards was a former defensive player that was moved to tight end and behind Richards they've got a junior college transfer Troy Aldridge and then a true freshman Josh Eby. So that they would desperately yeah. like not to play the true freshman. Mike Flanagan 58 sophomore from Sacramento will come into the game. Hicks so far 15 carries 91 yards Shaw seven carries 54 yards 528 to go. Third center quarter. comes in off the bench you got to be careful about the mm -hmm. exchange from the center to the quarterback. Second and four from the 40. Little delay action as they give it to the first man through Milliner the ball comes loose now whether his forward progress uh, had been stopped as apparently it has as they'll spot the ball at the 40 yard line but this is the time of the game when the strength of Nebraska that size that power that relentless pounding starts wearing on its own third down and four Stokes will come in motion to the near side Cook Alberts gets him Trev Alberts with the fifth sack today for the Nebraska Cornhuskers as Cook had some time couldn't make a decision and Alberts made it for him. It's very interesting. Albert comes in see him at the bottom of your screen. You'll see him at the bottom of your screen right here. He's going to rush in. Now what? He gets pushed to the outside by Ogden. Good block. But as Cook decides to run to the side that's open, he comes back around relentless in his pressure to make the sack. Fourth down for UCLA, Darren Shager back at the 25-yard line and just barely gets out of the way. Nice kick. And a momentary confusion by Corey Dixon as he is slammed down at the 22. Let's send you to New York and John Simon. John? Roger, Syracuse in Texas. The punt by the Orange, fielded by Mike Adams at the 46. Watch the footwork here. 54 yards for the touchdown, part of his 134 yards returning the football today. And right now, Texas leads it 18 to 14 in the third quarter. Elsewhere, Arizona State is trailing Louisville 21 to 10 at halftime. Roger, back to you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, John. First and 10, 24 yard line, 357 to go first quarter. Nebraska leads UCLA 14 to 10 as Tommy Frazier will run the option and pitch it back to Lawrence Phillips. Big hole on the right side. And Phillips across the 35 to the 36 and look out. This is the time Nebraska starts rolling. 13 yards on the pickup and Lynn there was so much room for Phillips to run. Jameer Miller number 95 from UCLA comes crashing in forces a pitch very early. But he's got another lead blocker out there. Phillips gets a handle. He gets a little shade block out there on number 22 Goodwin by the receiver so he's able to pick his way inside for more yardage. First and 10 they'll go to Schlesinger across the 40 to the 41. Let's uh, go down to the sideline at John Neighbor. John. Thanks so much Coach Osborne in the halftime locker room told the team to pursue the football more. They need more heart and that's certainly what they appear to be doing. The strength coach says that it looks like the Bruin line is weakening. Their players are getting hurt. Nebraska is penetrating. Well, it was interesting talking to Terry Donahue the other day. He said a game against Nebraska early in the year, whether you win or lose, can affect you for a month after that game. Because of the physical pounding. And then they come at you. I mean, they, they don't just lift weights at Nebraska to look good. You know, they lift it to, to, to give it to you, <laughs> to lay it on you during the ball game. On second and seven, good fake by Frazier. Now he throws intended for Abdul Muhammad who stopped on his route and Frazier you saw him point and say you got to keep running man you got to keep going. Well it's a broken play he wanted him to go up the field and you know and try and find an open zone. Very different for Nebraska in this ball game with only 14 points. I mean the first two games you, you look at the kind of average they have 330 yards rushing. But I mean, 63 points per game. This is an average of two games. But keep in mind, the first game against North Texas was really a blowout. But against Texas Tech, Tech led 21-20 late in the third quarter. So that game didn't become a blowout till the fourth quarter. On third and seven from the 40-yard line, Nebraska four out of seven on third down situations. Frazier hangs in the pocket. And the intended receiver, Corey Dixon, either there was a miscommunication because he ran it down. in and the ball went out. Oh, he, he fell down okay. on the play. I couldn't adjust to the ball. Nonetheless, give the nod to the UCLA defense. They hung tough there and forced Nebraska to punt. We 
talk a great deal about Nebraska in the weight room. But keep in mind, all major colleges in Division 1A you know, today have extensive weight room programs. Gidry will take the punt from Bennett. Back at the 10. Penalty marker goes down. Penalty marker is thrown at the 15-yard line. And it's going to be against Nebraska. 49 yards on the punt, 17 on the return. Nebraska led the nation in net punting in 92, an average of 41.7. And they had no return yardage on five punts so far this year. So the Nebraska special teams working effectively. Illegal block in the back on the return team, 10 yards at the spot of the foul. The illegal <laughs> block in the back by UCLA. And the penalty on UCLA. And Tuesday night, the wait's over, folks. You can decide for yourself about NYPD Blue. It's been called the season's only groundbreaking new show. You'll see why when NYPD Blue premieres Tuesday night on ABC. Viewer discretion advised. So that time, the special teams let Nebraska down the field and the penalty by UCLA and the Bruins jammed up against their goal line first and ten from the eight yard line Cook throwing a quick out Stokes is over there and gain of about three that's a dangerous pass but completed as the tackle made by Baron Miles as we look from the uh, Goodyear blimp here at the Rose Bowl in the Big 8, Wisconsin defeated Iowa State. Minnesota, Kansas State to play tonight. Oklahoma State, Tulsa this evening. And Colorado, Stanford also this evening. But the bad news is Utah beat Kansas, Texas, A&M, clobbered Missouri, and Oklahoma is idle. So not a good day so far for the Big 8 teams. On second, let's call it a long five as Hicks with room. Skip Hicks. Look at that kid go across the 40 to the 42-yard line. Baron Miles makes a tackle, 28 yards on the pickup, and folks, you are seeing something pretty special here today in 18-year-old Skip Hicks. Charlie McBride says, defense for from Nebraska, I've got a big play defense, negative and positive. They make the big play, getting the turnover, and they give up the big play. Well, I have to believe, watching Brian Skip Hicks this afternoon, he's making a lot of these people miss tackles, and then you saw that at the end, just lowered the shoulder to get a little extra. 16 carries, 119 yards for Hicks. First and 10, 41 yard line. Again, look at him just slide. You know, he shows you a little bit of Marcus Allen. Doesn't look like he's working that hard. He just picks up a lot of yardage. Slides off tackles. He seems to glide through the hole. Yeah. You know, as, as if he's got a longer stride, he doesn't. He's very, very smooth in the, in the economy of motion. You don't see him giving you moves and fakes he doesn't feel he needs, and he seems to have enough power, you know, to knock a few people over at the same time when he makes contact. It's like a very confident running back right now on second and three from the 48. The other freshman, Ruckman, right in front of him, number 49. Let's Hicks hit behind the line of scrimmage. 86 was the first man in, Dwayne Harris, the junior from Bessemer, Alabama, 6'2 and 220. He's been dinged up. Nebraska's had their share of injuries, besides the quarterback story, which we told you about. And of course, Calvin Jones, they've had some defensive players that have been banged up this year. Dante Jones hasn't played so far today. See the clock, less than 30 seconds to go. Third quarter, third and four, 47 yard line for the Bruins of UCLA as Cook. Goes to the outside, throws it downfield. The catch is made by Mike Wynn at the 37 and a UCLA first down. Troy Dumas over on the tackle after the pickup of 16 yards. Nebraska trying to put a little pressure on the quarterback as he rolls. Zone coverage. Wynn just does a good job of sliding in front of the cornerback. Or, excuse me, that was the safety, Troy Dumas. Well, the clock running as the final few seconds here of the third quarter will uh, tick off. Wayne Cook has not made spectacular plays this afternoon, but more importantly, he has not made the big mistakes and is leading this football team down the field. We'll return with more action between Nebraska and UCLA after this message 
and a word from our ABC stations. Well, the uh, San Gabriel Mountains looming in the background behind the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, along with Lynn Swan and John Neighbor. I'm Roger Twibell. As we get set for the final 15 minutes, Nebraska 14, UCLA 10, first and 10, 37-yard line. Beautiful day. Just doesn't get any better than this for college football. As Cook will hand it off to Hicks. Skip Hicks inside the 20 to the 15-yard line. Wayne Harris makes the tackle 24 yards on the pickup. He's a true freshman. I feel a little strange saying he's having a career day. He's only played his second ball game. He's well over 100 yards, and he is carrying this football team as if he was a grizzled veteran coming out of the backfield. Over 3,600 yards and 41 touchdowns at Burke Burnett High in Wichita Falls, Texas. 19 carries 149 yards and Hicks comes off the field limping slightly and Sharman Shaw will step in to fill his shoes on a first and 10 from the 14 as the first player through Milliner driving and can't get much as number five Lorenzo Brinkley the senior from St. Louis and Troy Dumas both come up to make the tackle it's deflating to your attitude when a player like Hicks is performing so well and then suddenly he comes out of that ball game when you really need him and you're going in for the score. Second and nine, 13-yard line. You saw the uh, San Diego State Air Force score. The weather has improved. They're playing football there. And we've got a, a official timeout. Official timeout. I want to remind you, at the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each team. And for the 23rd year through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the general scholarship fund of each school. Second and nine, 13-yard line. Cook is nailed, and he loses the football. Cook was nailed from behind. 93 was in there. Billy Wade, who nailed him from behind. And Terry Keneally jumped on the football. Are they going to call it an incomplete pass or down? Lynn? They're going to call him down as you look at the replay. You see him just coming in from behind. Oh, his knee is up in the air. The ball, that is a fumble all the way. That was a missed call by the official. Trev Alberts was the man who got him first. And when Wade came in, he was able to knock it loose. So a questionable call. Third and 12 from the 16. And nearly having the ball stripped, but able to get it away. And the pass completed to Kevin Jordan at the 10-yard line. Beautiful job by Wayne Cook right there, who nearly had the ball stripped away by Lorenzo Brinkley, but recovered to get the Bruins in field goal range. A little slot of hand that time by Cook. But here's the previous play. Now watch Cook. Alberts gets him first. Alberts from behind, number 34. He's going down. The ball is out. His knee had yeah. not touched the ground. And then Keneally recovered. But he, the official said he was down, no fumble. Merton, the 27-yard attempt. He's missed his last two, but that one's good. So Bjorn Merton gets UCLA to within one. 14-13, 12-22. Left to go from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. And welcome back here to the Rose Bowl. In Pasadena, California, Nebraska leads UCLA 14-13. After the Merton field goal, and I uh, want to remind you next Saturday, top 10 teams score off in regional action on ABC it's college football. Most of you will see the UCLA Bruins take on Stanford or fourth-ranked Notre Dame tackle Purdue plus other regional action. Check your local listings for the game on your ABC stations and call your cable operator for games available on pay-per-view. Merton to kick it off for UCLA. Corey Dixon, excuse me, 14 Baron Miles will bring it out from the end zone, and he has hit one, stays on his feet, and is hauled down at the 20-yard line. So he suffered a lot of uh, pain and punishment for something he could have just walked back to the bench for. Let's uh, send you to New York and John Sanders. John.
Roger, Penn State and Iowa. Steve Pitts here. Nine-yard touchdown run. Cuts it back right there and then dives to the end zone. 17 to nothing. The Nittany Lions on the road in the Big Ten with the lead. Meanwhile, San Diego State and Air Force 17 to 14. The Falcons with the lead. Roger. Thank you very much, John. Well, maybe the Nittany Lions are going to smell roses this year. First and ten, Phillips gets about five. A couple, couple of teams in the Big Ten are smelling them. Yeah. The only one's going to wear them. Well, let's take a look at Pac-10 action. Oregon State, Washington State will meet today. Colorado, Stanford tonight. Arizona holds on to beat Illinois 16 to 14. Arizona with their third win of the year. Louisville leads Arizona State 21-10 at half that game at Louisville. And Cal will play Temple in Philadelphia. Then USC, Oregon, and Washington all off today. And second and six from the 25-yard line. Frazier checks off at the line of scrimmage. On the option, Tommy Frazier is going to keep it, and he has not run the ball that much. I think, Lynn, that's why Miller and some of the other backers are getting to him so quickly. I mean, he is not really a threat to run the football, and they're trying to put some hurt on him. Well, they're trying to put the hurt on him just to try and make him slow down the pit. You see, that could be him. Smalley and Collier that time were there to bring him down. I don't know, the young man's ankle coming into the game was not good. We saw him get hurt in the first half and limp off. And I know you can't not play, but it seems to me having him run the option on that tender ankle is just asking for trouble. Well, well the defense of UCLA is attacking the quarterback in this option. I mean, they're going right after you see Goodwin 22 flying in there, forcing him to go upfield. They want the quarterback to keep the ball because they know he has a tender ankle. And they want to pound him and put that kind of physical pressure on him. If they can stop the ball at the quarterback, then they can stop this, this Nebraska offense. 18, Brooke Bariner has checked into the game. He's a sophomore from Goodland, Kansas, on third and one from the 30. They didn't get anything. Stuffed behind the line of scrimmage. Number 92, Matt Warner. Was in on that play. Marvin Goodwin, they got excellent penetration. Driving across. There's a look at Warner from Yorba Linda, a senior. And watch him right there at the top. He stands up the guard. He pushes forward. Bumps him into the running back. Allowing everyone else to come in. Nicozy Littleton, number 54, and the rest of the linebackers to make the stop. Fourth down. There's Jameer Miller getting it from uh, his defensive coordinator. A little talking to. Andy Colbert's back deep as Nebraska will punt it from inside the 20. Beautiful punt. Colbert, the freshman at the 20. He's got some speed, but he is pulled down there. 95 for Nebraska. Gerald Armstrong, 50 yards on the punt. Glimpse log over 100,000 miles every year covering major sporting events, and we're happy to have him here. Cameraman Glenn Hampton. Up there, giving us those pictures. Are you there, Glenn? Tommy Frazier, we're told, will return after turning that ankle one more time. Sharman Shaw in the game for the UCLA Bruins. They've got it first and 10 at the 20. 10 15 left to go. Ruckman, 49, is the fullback. Shaw, the second man through. Nothing going on the left side. Anderson, 48, Mike Anderson, the senior from Grand Island, Nebraska, and being treated over on the UCLA sideline is Skip Hicks, who so far today has 148 yards rushing, the most ever by a freshman for UCLA, Kevin Nelson, 186 back in 1980. And we'll find out uh, what his injury situation is as soon as we can. Second and 10 from the 20-yard line. Shaw trying to go up the middle. There ends Not up much happening. Yeah, Brinkley was there. Trev Alberts. Lorenzo Brinkley, normally number five, oh, wouldn't be in the ball game a great deal. Did you see that new move? What? That you know, it was, it was kind of like a uh, arm lock. Yeah, the arm lock. Yeah, hey, listen. <laughs> I hadn't seen that one before. You I, haven't seen that one before. I hadn't seen the arm lock before. No. Maybe, maybe it was inadvertent. Maybe they just missed a high five. Could be. 
Third and 10, 21 yard line. The Bruins three out of 10 in third down situations. Cook's gonna feel the heat this time. Just does get it away and the pass deflected. Kevin Jordan, the intended receiver. Baron Miles, number 14, was there on the coverage. Baron Miles, he's small, only 5'8", 160, very athletic. Making the move, he was all over Kevin Jordan on the play. You see 86, Dwayne Harris trying to find a way to get inside. Several people are there just as the ball is thrown. Cook gets a little contact getting that ball away. Darren Shager with his fifth punt today. This from the five-yard line. Nice spiral. Dixon back at the 30. And Dixon will take it back to the 40-yard line. Nebraska with good field position. 8.37 left to go, and they lead the Bruins by a point. Civic Auditorium just about three miles from here. Nebraska. Did first you get your invitation? I didn't. Uh, our, our producer Joe Feld will be there, though, I can tell you that. He'll give us he, a report he didn't, he didn't invite any of us. <laughs> first and 10, 40 yard line. Frazier, look at him go. Back in the game after injuring the ankle on an option similar to that. But look at him high stepping. Just to show everybody, no problem. Donnie Edwards made the tackle and 15 yards on the pickup for Tommy Frazier. I mean, Tommy Frazier reminds you a little bit of Joe Frazier. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, he's been hit and knocked down. He gets up, he's hit and knocked down. He gets up, he's hurt and he doesn't care. He gets back up again, sticks his helmet right into the action and comes up with the big play. Nebraska substituting a lot of people right now. Frazier, five carries, 36 yards. First and 10, 45 yard line of UCLA. Phillips. And a gain of about nine. Let's send you down to John Neighbor. John. Thanks, Roger. Behind the UCLA bench, Skip Hicks is being tended to right now. They say it's a severe sprain of his left ankle. Whether or not he'll come back to action today is, quote, touch and go. They have not yet. They took his shoe off and they put it back on again. So I guess that's probably a good sign. Back to you. Thank you, John. Uh, if it's yeah. a severe sprain, I, I, doubt, I doubt he'd come back into the ball game. And that expression is his disappointment because he was playing so well. Second and one. Phillips gets nailed. Be very close to the first down. Jameer Miller, number 95. His first game, he missed the Cal game because of his one game suspension. Miller, a six foot four, 245 pound junior from El Cerrito, California. 11 career sacks and went in just eight games last year. Led UCLA with uh, six sacks and 11 tackles for losses. So he is a very athletic, quick, aggressive football player. Well, Nebraska was very concerned. They knew he might be starting in this ball game, and, and they respected his talent greatly. Schlesinger on the third and one, more than enough for the first down. So now Nebraska, five out of ten in third down situations. Part of the... Uh, Contingent of better than 9,500 out here. She's saying hello to our kids. Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we Hope left you home with the yeah. babysitter. <laughs> 6:54 left to go. Nebraska leads UCLA 14 to 13. And you see the two tight ends now, the three guys in the backfield. This is traditional Nebraska power football. As Frazier checks off at the line of scrimmage, and he is nailed as he takes it down the line. Might have gotten about a yard with the lean forward. But the left side of that uh, UCLA defense with uh, 22, Marvin Goodwin, the safety coming up. London Woodson in there. I'll tell you, when Frazier took it that field, everybody collapsed on him. And number one, Lawrence Phillips, the eye back in that formation, was on the outside. Nobody was in front of him. And he was just hoping that ball would come out in the last second pitch so he could take off with it. Second and 10 from the 33. Nebraska with three wide receivers and Frazier, Frazier beautiful throw there. Reggie Ball makes the reception close to the first down, 12 yards on the pickup. And I want to tell you, Tommy Frazier really put something on that football to get it in there. Watch Frazier though after he throws the football. Watch the motion. He throws it. Now watch him throw. He'll hop up. You see there? He hops up and limps a little bit on that leg. It's the right ankle, and of course, being a right-handed passer, that's where he's pushing off of. 11 of 17, 135 yards, a TD and an interception.
Well, there was another bench warning there to uh, Nebraska. They got one in the first half. Well, they're too far down the field. You can only be as far as the 25-yard line. They keep drifting down. Schlesinger still going. Look at Schlesinger inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Corey Schlesinger, a 6-foot, 225-pound junior from Duncan, Nebraska, who along with Dante Jones are the co-lifters. These are the two strongest guys on the Nebraska football team. They say he will just come at you. He has great endurance. As you watch the line, open up a little bit of a hole for him right there, and he just comes busting out. Says one of his hobbies is demolition derby. Mm. I wonder if, he, if that was just a joke. <laughs> I don't think so. Human demolition derby. First and goal from the nine-yard line. Frazier on the play action. Now he is nailed back at the 18-yard line, the first sack of the day, and it was Matt Werner, the senior from Yorba Linda, the sixth and a half sack of his career and a 10-yard loss. Roger, there were two receivers out for Nebraska downfield and five defenders for UCLA covering them. There was no way they were going to get open. Frazier should have just thrown that ball out of bounds, gotten rid of it, instead of eating the ball and getting the sack. Second and 16. Second and goal from the 16-yard line. Three wide receivers for Nebraska. 450 left to go. The Cornhuskers lead the Bruins by one. Frazier. Frazier will pitch it. And a good grab made right there by Lawrence Phillips. As that ball came down below his knees and he was able to grab it. Robert Gamble, 24, was over to make the tackle. Give the credit to number eight, Tommy Bennett, who came up and really strung this play out. Number eight coming to your picture. He just comes up, he makes him pitch the ball, then he maintains position, forcing it back to continue laterally until he gets help. And Frazier takes another hit. Third and goal, 12-yard line, out of the shotgun. Four wide receivers for Nebraska. Quickly to Dixon. He's stripped of the ball. You see how he's got it. Tommy Bennett. Number eight, Tommy Bennett, who had the pick earlier today, comes up with a fumble. And UCLA trailing by a point with 4.34 to go will have the football. They try and run the quick screen, and look at all the people going to the outside the block. The quick screen is designed to come inside, but it's number 23, Donnie Edwards, Donnie Edwards that goes and gets a good position, stops him from coming inside, and helps cause a fumble. He does that. He had three forced fumbles last year. That's his trademark. The big hit stripped the ball. UCLA's got it. First and 10 at the 14. Turnovers, Nebraska four, UCLA none. And that's from the team that led the nation in turnover mar margin last year. Has no gain on that play. And let's send you to New York and John Saunders. Roger, Syracuse and Texas. And the Orange in a bit of a struggle here. But Marvin Graves looks one way, goes the other to Brian Pacucci for the touchdown. It's tied the game at 21 apiece. Miami, now Frank Costa's gone 45 yards to A.C. Tettleson. Right now, the Hurricanes lead just 14-0. Roger. Thanks, John. Along with uh, John Neighbor, Lynn Swan, I'm Roger Twibo at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. Four minutes left to go. Nebraska leads UCLA 14-13. Second and nine from the 15-yard line. Milliner is the lone back as Cook will throw it near side to Stokes, who tries to cut it up. Similar play, Lynn, that uh, Nebraska just fumbled on a moment ago. John Reese was there, number six, and Lorenzo Brinkley, number five. Both teams very active on the defensive side. The quick screens have not worked for either team. They've run them three or four times this afternoon, but each time the secondary or a linebacker coming up to make the stop. J.J. Stokes, you see his stats, four catches for 53 yards, but they have contained him. They have not let him get away on the big play. Third down situation, UCLA 3 of 11 today. They were 2 of 14 against Cal. Third and 12. Cook downfield. Stokes has got it. That's where he had to get past the 25-yard line. I'll tell you what, Stokes, a big play kind of player. 14 yards on the reception. Coming into this game, his last five touchdown catches had averaged 40 yards a reception in a big play here. 
Now we talk about big plays. There aren't always for touchdowns. He's going against Baron Miles. He just has a little curling pattern here. He gets a yardage for the first down and screened out Miles so he couldn't come around. And a good pass by Cook. Stokes from San Diego. And UCLA first and 10 at the 25-yard line out of the shotgun with Wayne Cook. Deflected at the line of scrimmage, 86, Dwayne Harris, and we talked about it earlier. The seven man feet. with the seven-foot wingspan. Keep a couple things in mind. Last two weeks ago, when they played Cal, they had a chance to win the ball game, march down the field, as we watch Harris, number 86, get his hands up in the air right there. They were in the position to kick a field goal and win the ball game. Cook throws an interception. They don't win the ball game. About a 45-yard field. They were trying to get a little closer. They were trying to get a little closer. But this team is capable of marching and moving the ball down the field. And they are at their best when they play against the better football team. Big competition. Second and 10, 26-yard line. And that time, Trev Alberts got a piece of it. Cook setting back, getting pressure from the outside, maybe not moving up in the pocket as much as Terry Donahue would like him to. And now they're faced with a third down and 10 at the 26-yard line. And without the freshman, Skip Hicks, things have really slowed down offensively for UCLA. They certainly have. This is, this is not where you want to be with 238 in the ball game, facing third and long. You see Hicks has got his pads off. He does want to look at the field, very disappointed. He's hurt now. UCLA 4 out of 12 on third down situations on a third and 10 at the 26. He's got win. Juggled the ball. Couldn't maintain possession. Brinkley was there on the coverage. And Mike Wynn had the football on his hands and couldn't pull it in. A tremendous pass by Wayne Cook. To get this ball to the outside, the ball travels quite a distance, but it's right on the mark. Wynn has a chance right to the hall of in. It bounces off his face mask. And then Teresa comes over. A good coverage there. Good coverage. Been a tough catch for Wynn. As Shager will catch it to Kareem Moss. And that kick is going to take a Nebraska bounce. It's down at the 47-yard line. So the Huskers with good field position. And 2.23 left to go. They lead it by one. Nebraska leads UCLA 14-13 to with 2.23 left to go here at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. And if time permits, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report featuring scores and highlights from across the country. Get this. Both teams today... eerie wouldn't you say <laughs> wouldn't you say yes now each team with defense all, all time out UCLA playing a lot stronger than the competition Nebraska seen thus far in the season each team with three timeouts remaining first and 10 47 yard line 223 left to go Lawrence Phillips second man through he'll get you about six yards well this is where you're going to see Nebraska's offensive line take a short split. As you time out is called by UCLA, take a short split. Just kind of stack that line together. Try and get behind, let the running backs just try and get behind them and drive a little bit down the field. This is a, this is a really difficult time right now for Terry Donahue's team. Two timeouts left now. They lost their first game at Cal. And, and Lynn, we talked to Terry this week. You know, he's had a great career. He's won all the bowl games he's ever been in at UCLA. But he is 23-22-1 over the last four seasons. And of those 22 losses, 11 have been by seven or fewer points, including five by no more than four, and three by a single point, as well as a two-point loss to Cal. And this is where he stands on the winningest active coaches. Tenth on the list, Tom Osborne of Nebraska, number one. But I guess the point being, if they would lose this game today in 0-2, they've lost the conference game, then have to go on the road to Stanford. They haven't been to the Rose Bowl since 86. Things are going to get tough here at UCLA. Yeah. Terry are, Donahue. Things are already mm -hmm. tough here at UCLA. But Terry Donahue is, is, is a competitive coach. He tries to get the most out of his kids. I think he'll sit down after this game and have a long talk with him. 
obviously trying to make sure that mentally and emotionally their, their attitudes are adjusted to go out and play the best possible game against Stanford they can. Second and five from the 48. Schlesinger. And he gets to the 45-yard line. It'll bring up a third down and two. And UCLA will take their second timeout. Timeout on the field, 2.06 left to go. Stations and call your cable operator for games available on pay-per-view. Louisville leading Arizona State now 28 to 10 in the third. Nebraska, third down and two. They've missed their last three third down tries, but Tommy Frazier is not going to let that happen this time as he gets to the 40-yard line, and with one timeout remaining, UCLA's got a heap of trouble as they trail Nebraska 14 to 13, and Tommy Frazier has really played himself a fine football game today on that tender ankle. Clock continues to run. Less than two minutes to go. Now it's a matter of taking care of the football for Nebraska. They've had four turnovers today. Very unlike the University of Nebraska. Phillips and doesn't get anything right at the line of scrimmage. As the UCLA players piling on, trying to strip the ball away, and they're going to take the timeout. That's their final timeout with 1.35 left to go. Nebraska leads 14-13. Academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. Congratulations to both of those players. Unfortunately for Hicks, he went out with the ankle injury. And his team trailing by one, 14-13, 135 left to go. UCLA has used all of their timeouts. Second and 10 for Nebraska. Lawrence Phillips will take it outside, and he gets about four yards. Brought down by Marvin Goodwin, number 22. Well, the clock's running, and Tom Osborne's Nebraska football team, they, barring any tremendous turnaround, will probably walk away with a, with a tight win, a one-point win. But I think you'll use this, Roger, to basically tell his team, you know, if you thought you were good because you were scoring 63 points, averaging in your first two ball games, take a look at this ball game and then find out what you have to do to get better to improve throughout the, the season. Frazier wants a timeout on a third and five from the 35-yard line. You know, we've talked about Hicks all day, but Lawrence Phillips, the freshman from West Covina, 28 carries, 137 yards. So we have seen a couple of really outstanding freshman running backs here today. There's a look at Phillips. He is still learning. He's got tremendous speed. Good change of pace. Change of direction. Stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report featuring scores and highlights from across the country. That's uh, coming up at the conclusion of this game. Now I want to finish up on what we're talking with Terry Donahue about. Uh, about four years ago, the academic rules at UCLA were changed by the administration. There are players that Terry Donahue cannot recruit that other schools in the Pac-10 can. Yet Terry admitted to us the other day that probably himself and his staff have not done the best job maybe in selecting the kids that they have recruited. It's a two-way street there. And he says they've got to do a better job at that. But it affects all of college football. The scholarship numbers are down, and it's just the days of redshirting freshmen are over. We're seeing true freshmen playing here today, Lynn, even for Nebraska, which is a, a rarity. And, and, it's, and it's, it's a much more complicated picture when you look at the fact that, you know, the Pac-10 will not take Prop 48 kids. Mm -hmm. And we see, you know, at, uh, at Nebraska, they have a Prop 48 kid who's, going to gra who's already graduated, but they brought him into the program. At the same time, you look at gender equity and what it does financially to a package in school and the budget restraints, and the head coach has to deal with all of this and still try and win football games. On third and five, Frazier is nailed behind the line of scrimmage. Marvin Goodwin came up from his strong safety spot in 49 seconds left to go, and a fourth down coming up for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They'll let the clock run uh, as long as they can. It, it would not hurt them just to let the clock run all the way down, take the penalty, and then punt. Right. But I think to put uh, sort of the uh, finishing touches on the Terry Donahue situation, 
They had some bad luck, too, with injuries last year, and Tommy Maddox left a couple of years ago. But regardless of that, he appears close to be back on track with a pretty good football team. As uh, UCLA player Marvin Goodwin Now the clock has stopped because <laughs> Goodwin has an injury. He goes off to the sideline, but now he's he not. He looks fine now, huh? He looks good now. Praise be. <laughs> Miracle of all miracles. Hey, well, the Emmys are going on tomorrow night, right? I guess he just his, showed up a day early. His Academy Award performance. <laughs> <laughs> now the clock's running. Bennett. Standing back at his own 48, down to 10 seconds. They're just going to wait. And the game is over. That's it. Nothing to it. Guy who thought the official should have stopped the clock. Nebraska came into this game 10-point favorites, and they hold on for a 14-13 victory over UCLA. UCLA has now lost two games by a total of three points. And the ninth meeting between these two teams, and Nebraska now leads the series five games to four. That's the final from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. John Saunders coming up next with the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report. For John Neighbor, Lynn Swan, I'm Roger Twybo. Thanks for being with us, and we will see you next week, everybody.